I decided to test the uh, crystal cells plugged into this 12 volt fan here and they actually have enough uh, amperage to drive this uh, 12 volt fan so I thought that was interesting so I've connected them up directly uh, to the 12 volt fan here and they're just uh, powering that along it's by no means running uh, full speed but I'm surprised a motor of this size would even uh, run on these crystal cells so pretty interesting Okay, so I'm getting back to finishing up the crystal cell project. I want to get this finished up so I can get back to my atmospheric electricity research. So what I've got here is I've got the 10 finished uh, crystal cells. And I built these cells using a different method than the uh, pipe cap method. And I'll go over that in this video and show you. It's, it's a little faster, a little easier to make. So you can see that the voltage uh, is about 13 volts. And uh, the amperage is... It's... 300 something milliamps. Let me move this over to the 10 amp setting and see what it measures there. So it's measuring 300 or so milliamps. Now that, that output's going to drop way down, folks, as these uh, cells level off. These are freshly made, so they're running at a very, uh, and a much higher current. You can see it's about a quarter amp that these cells are putting out. But uh, they'll level off, and they'll just put out a smaller amount of current over the life of the cell. Okay, so I just want to show another method for making these uh, crystal cells. And this method seems to be a lot faster to me, and I think it has some advantages. And uh, one of the problems with the uh, cells that were based in the uh, copper pipe caps is that the uh, crystal cell material will get in from the bottom, and after like two years of use, it'll push this magnesium core up and out the top. So to completely eliminate that, I'm working with a system that uh, is completely different on this one. So what I've got is I've got a, a sleeve that fits inside the copper pipe that I'm using. So it fits that diameter perfectly, and it also fits right around the magnesium. So when the magnesium is setting down in the cell, I can take this sleeve and I can pack the material around the magnesium core with this sleeve, and that works really, really well. I've got another section of this pipe that I'm using uh, to make rings. So what I do is I create a, a ring on the bottom and a ring on the top. And I'll go over that in this video real quick. Now, I just took this uh, PVC, you know, this is one inch copper pipe, and I took this uh, one inch PVC pipe. And originally it doesn't fit in here, but I heated it up with a heat gun. And I was able to, uh, after heating it, to get it to have a perfectly snug fit. And if I keep heating it here, you don't want it to completely melt, but you just warm it up. You can run this pipe through here and reduce the diameter of this pipe until it fits completely through the uh, copper. And that's what I've been doing here. So that's how I was able to bring this down to size. But the important thing is you just want something to create a stopper on the top and bottom. And then you want all the pressure from the crystal cell growth to press against the outside of the copper into the magnesium all the way around. You don't want any of these vertical uh, pressures. And that takes care of all of this. So, Okay, so I just need to create a ring. And this ring only needs to be, uh, a, it's no larger than an eighth inch. Just a real small stopper ring on the bottom. So, Okay, so you can see we've got the ring made here and we'll put this into place. Okay, so the ring goes into here. And I usually just take the sleeve that I slide it down with and press it into the bottom. And uh, there we go. So you can see the ring there. Now the magnesium core will go inside here and it'll fit right along there. And then as we pack the material around, this just creates a really solid tight unit. So anyway, let's go ahead and start. I'm using this uh, pipe cap here kind of as a um, funnel. So that's the uh, purpose this is serving and it allows me to funnel the material down around the uh, core. So I find that this is a lot easier than uh, all that baking, and etc. And time will tell if this works as well. You know, I'm going to put this into testing, long-term testing. And we'll see if this method holds up as well and functions as well and produces as much power over the duration of its lifetime as the uh, hot plate method. But uh, it's just so much easier to construct and uh, build. And I wouldn't be surprised if the amount of surface area that you get with this method is even better because you're, pa you're packing it in with such pressure. You know, when you pack this in with all that pressure, you end up... Uh, really getting a nice uh, contact surface between the uh, 
the crystal cell material and the copper and magnesium. You want to be careful that when you tap this in, you don't tap it in too hard because if you tap it in too hard, you won't get this pipe out. And uh, at the top, when you cap it, at the point of capping it, you can tap it in really hard and leave the top ring there. And I'll show that uh, here in a second. We're, we've almost got this one full, so this one's almost ready to cap off here at the top. Okay, so this, this is pretty much full of material. So at this point, I can take this off. And you can see that there's a little bit of an indentation here. And what we want to do is take this piece and pound a ring down into this uh, material and leave a uh, stopper ring on the top to hold the material in. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm just going to line this up here on the top. And this has been reduced. This is the reduced PVC, so it's going to fit in there. And uh, this becomes the top seal. That really pressurizes the uh, inside material. So there's a lot of pressure on this inside material now and it's uh, all sealed up inside here. So now I'm just gonna cut the uh, PVC pipe off right along this line here. Okay, so that finishes it and we'll take a close up look at this. Okay, so now that's finished, you can see that we have the uh, PVC uh, sleeve here and down here, and uh, that's going to leave all the pressure coming in on the magnesium core from just these uh, side angles. Okay, some folks have been asking about the uh, threaded bolt and nut on top, and really I just drilled a hole into my magnesium core with a drill bit on low speed, and then I screwed in this, uh, magne or this bolt into the magnesium. And that's just giving me a, an attachment so that I can put a washer on here and screw tighten this down on a wire later. And that's the point on that. So anyway, this cell is uh, all ready for some testing, so I'll get the multimeter on it and we'll uh, see what it puts out. Okay, so you can see that we've got the uh, crystal cell connected up here, and it's putting out 1.357 volts. That's pretty much normal. Let's check the uh, milliamps on it. Wow, 170, 160 milliamps. So even though we never uh, bake this one on top of a hot plate, uh, it's putting out over 100 milliamps. Tell you what, let's connect this up to a motor and uh, see that output into a uh, motor. I've still got this motor here from the uh, previous experiment. Yeah, look at that. So it seems to work well. We'll put this into long-term testing and uh, see how it does over the long term. But, you know, this sure, at this point, it sure beats uh, dealing with the hot plate and all of that baking and, and all that bubbling and all that stuff. So I'm really happy with this method. And based on my experience, I think it's going to really be an advantage not to have the magnesium core getting pressed up out the top from the bottom. So. Anyway, that's uh, method two for making the crystal cells. Definitely a faster method, and I'm going to get this into the 15-volt uh, arrangement, and we'll go from there. So this is one scenario. I've got the crystal cells uh, connected up here in series. It's a 13-volt crystal cell pack coming over here into the uh, mini boost pack, and uh, that's connected to the jewel ringer. So these cells would keep this mini boost pack charged up. Uh, so anytime you're not using it, they're going to be charging the mini boost pack. When you turn this on, um, now we've got the light on, and you can see the voltage here dropping. And what's going to happen is the voltage will slowly drop, but when you turn this back off, the crystal cells are going to bring the mini boost pack back up to the uh, 12 to 13 volt range. So that's one use case that's kind of interesting, and I was seriously considering uh, buttoning these down in a configuration like this and putting this out in the chicken coop so that at, when you go out at night, you can flip this on, get the eggs, flip it off, and this would uh, recharge the mini boost pack right, right on back up. So interesting uh, use case idea. It's probably not what I'm going to do. I'm going to end up uh, using these to drive a long duration running motor. I would like to get a motor that runs you know, my lifetime or maybe even 100 years. I've been working toward that uh, goal. And based on the two-year runtime of the uh, current crystal cell motor that I've been running, I think I'm going to put these into use with an easy spin motor for a super long duration runner. And uh, just shoot, you know, hey, if, if it doesn't run anywhere near 100 years, so be it, but that's kind of the goal I'd like to shoot for. 
So anyway, I'll probably put them into use on a project like that. But you can see here, that when I get this down to around 10 volts, I'm going to turn this off and uh, the voltage will climb back up on the mini boost pack because the crystal cells will be charging it. So we're almost down to 10 volts here. As soon as we level off at 10 volts, all right, let's turn this off. And now what you're going to be able to see is you'll see that these crystal cells are going to start to charge the mini boost pack back up in voltage. And that's, that would be a pretty interesting use case for these um, because you could literally just have a maintenance free uh, setup that you could just uh, come out to flip a switch and have light for a few minutes, flip the switch off and self charge back up.